Um, but we do want to talk about the Lucid Air. The Lucid Air I mentioned yeah. has a little bit of new news. Okay, Maybe yeah, I'll can just, you tell me that before I... Uh... I'll start with that. Yeah, they are officially bringing to market the cheapest variants of the Lucid Air. So uh, the one we had that we reviewed was the Grand Touring, and that one started at $154,000. Okay. It's, it's an expensive car, yeah. obviously. It's a luxurious big sedan, which is great. They made a cheaper rear-wheel drive version with a metal roof, not glass roof. Okay. And it starts way down at, I think, $87,000. What's the mileage on that? It'll get 400 miles of range, which is still oh. very solid. So it's, it's That's really cool. It's a much okay. more appealing. I think that's going to be the ideally highest volume selling version that they make. Even though it's not all wheel drive, it's still electric. It's still yeah. got like a great responsive powertrain. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's still that lucid interior people want. It's a, does it have like more range? Because generally with EVs, we've been seeing all wheel drive versus rear wheel drive. You'll usually gain, you know, at that 300, it'll be like you either get like 300 or 320. So maybe 20 more miles of range. But they, I think a battery pack like that. Yeah, they did put a smaller battery in this in this okay, one as well. Okay. So it's like a 93 kilowatt hour battery. Oh, but that's or cool. So that's why they can make it cheaper because yes, batteries right. are expensive. And here's the fun part. This modular battery system, and we didn't get to show it in our video, uh, actually has cutouts in parts of the battery that make sense. So in the rear seat footwell, yeah. instead of having your feet up high, they cut out parts of the battery right there. So your feet have more room to slide under the, the driver's seats. As so. two hosts that are over six feet tall. It's Thank well you, played. Lucid. It's we really, appreciate that. It's a lot. well done. Look, I like this car a lot. I had some hot takes about the design, which is it's ugly. But we'll, uh -huh. we'll maybe we'll get to that in a second. That's what I wanted to see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think the car itself, the way I, I, I went through, I I drove with it, I used it, I lived with it for over a week. I think almost almost a week and a half, two weeks. And like the technology in it. The motors, the drivetrain, the one pedal driving, the responsiveness of everything, the software, the way it's organized and built as a car is excellent. So when I see a $154,000 price tag, that's what I'm expecting. Yes. And this is the performance spec too. So it's all wheel drive, over a thousand horsepower, under three seconds, zero to 60, 450 miles of range. I think it's like $170,000 spec. Incredible car. So that is the lucid way, and that is that is sort of the theme of the video, is like they did a really good job with all of the parts of this car. And if you compare this to, let's say, Tesla's flagship, which is the Model S, which mm -hmm. starts at $100,000, they outdid, one by one, each of the most important pieces of the Model S. More range, faster peak charging, you know, better build quality, better luxury, more yeah. space inside. So I thought that was really interesting. But yeah, you do pay for it. <laughs> it yeah, you pay more. for it. Well, that's why, so like, well, all right. I have a couple thoughts here, which is kind of yeah, why yeah, I wanted to talk about this because I like really enjoyed the car. I think I don't, and you even mentioned looks are subjective. Like there are people out there who like the looks of that. People love Dude, it. One of the things when we had the Lucid Air and what was the Ferrari that we had? 296 GTB. So we had both of them parked next to each other in the parking lot and we were, I got them like the same day we were both out there looking. A Uber weird flex, but okay. Weird, great flex. <laughs> was a weird My day. job rules. But an Uber driver drove by with a passenger in the car and stopped because he wanted to come look and he wanted to look at the air, not the Ferrari. Yeah, that was interesting. That was very funny. And also props to that passenger who also came out to look at them Just while was out. trying to get driven home after work. But, I suspect um, that the Ferrari was so low, it was actually fully hidden by the Lucid. I, I literally said to him, I told him what it was and told him a bunch about it. And then I said, also, there's a Ferrari right there. And he's like, oh, no, I'm looking at this. I was like, oh, oh okay. okay. Yeah. All right. I guess he was into EVs and stuff like that. But I, um, I had a clip that I cut from the autofocus video, which was some guy, I was shooting in the back and some guy was like driving around and he stopped and he's like, what is that? And I was like, oh, yeah, it's a Lucid. And he was like, what, who makes it? And I was like, oh, I, right. I forgot. I have this to explain is, this. It's like the and, one plus. Yeah. And I, so I, I kind of, maybe I'll send this clip to you, Adam. I'll, I'll include that audio which is like i'm rolling and i hit the camera record button again and he's like it's a new company called lucid lucid, lucid yeah how many are they running for this is 150 oh. they made a they're not making very many but they're expensive the yeah right. and i was like yeah it looks luxurious yeah it has that look to it it's a big sedan with the two-tone and the glass everywhere yeah there are things I like about it. I I agree with you on the two tone. Not a big fan. I actually yeah. don't like it because I think it looks like with the 
quote unquote dumpy back. It, it looks like it's a place for, it looks like a convertible because the roof is a different color and it looks like it has a place to go into the back almost. Right. Yeah. And I don't love that. Um, but I like the front. I was thinking like if it was a convertible, I'm picturing that glass roof folding and it making the same sound as like the Royal Flex Pie, the like <laughs> creaking and like <laughs> creaking too. sliding back. It, yeah. it is an interesting looking car. Um, I like the front though. What'd you I, call it? You, it look, you said it looked like a whale shark. I said it looked like a whale I shark. I can't unsee that Well, now. what's funny is because I thought the front looked like a whale shark and then you open the back and the way the trunk lifts like a, from like all the way in the bottom and just opens the mouth, I was like, oh my God, that looks more like a whale shark. Yeah, um, inspired but, by But I, I I, like the outside. I think there are better looking cars out there, um, but I don't hate it. And then when you get on the inside of that thing, it is just... It's fantastic. You forget about the outside when you're on Dude, the inside. The inside is so quality. It's just yeah. like everything feels. Uh, I actually was comparing it to the e the Mercedes EQS we had because that That's was that. one where it met. Both of these cars feel like they're mostly focusing on the interior and mm -hmm. the like passenger or interior driving experience. And the EQS felt like we're Mercedes. We know how to do luxury, but we don't really know how to do the tech. It's like. Too many screens, too glossy. Yeah, a bunch of weird things, a like weird Galaxy Tab Two, like in the in back. The it's just like, yeah, we're luxury, but we don't know tech. The Lucid was like the refined version of all of that. It was yeah. the knobs were perfect. There was a really good mix of real buttons and touchscreen and the mm -hmm. the folding down screen and a couple little quirks in the software, like you mentioned. But man, the interior of that when I I just got to drive it to the back when we were shooting, and I was like, wow. This yeah. is, I would love to sit in this. You forget day. about the outside real quick. Yeah. I do. I will say the uh, the EQS comparison is accurate. When I I got a chance to actually visit Lucid's headquarters briefly before I came back to the East Coast and got to test the car, and what I noticed is they had a bunch of their competitors just like lined up in the front door of their headquarters, yeah. and they had a Tesla Model S, a Mercedes EQS, and a Porsche Taycan. And they had them for three different reasons. So the Lucid compares favorably in a certain way to each one. Yeah. For the Tesla Model S, same wheelbase, same length, more rear legroom. Okay. That's just because of how they've organized it. Smaller trunk. I went over that in the video. Like, that's a compromise they made, and it works. Uh, EQS, much bigger. So the Lucid is smaller than the EQS to achieve the same legroom. Okay. And then Taycan, obviously, is different. It's a sport car, but more legroom in all dimensions in the Lucid, yeah. obviously. Um, and that's their thing. So, yeah, it is It is mainly focused on the interior, which I think we did a great job with. Um, I don't know how much you're willing to pay for a car that doesn't yet have access to Tesla superchargers. That might be a thing soon, maybe. Yeah, there's there's some weird news coming out about that, too, with the, like, them offering their charging system up yeah. to other cars. Essentially which... the port. The port, which I'm also confused, is that going to be their way to give supercharging to other people? Because one they, of the ways, yeah. yeah it, they, it reminds me of like, it kind of feels like offering the lightning port to other phone manufacturers. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, we've got MFI and you can, if you want, put a lightning port in your phone and it'll work with lightning accessories, which is like the kingdom that we've built. It's kind of the same thing with Tesla superchargers. But at this point, like you're, you're getting really fast peak charging on these cars, but only if you can find an Electrify America charger that handles 350 kilowatts, that's working, that isn't occupied and not broken. But you have a hundred over 100 more miles of range on it. That's true. That's massive. So like that is really big. Yeah. You can go an entire, at least for me, for my commute, I could go an entire week back and forth commuting really? and not charge. That's crazy. I also was really hoping you would have like one of your Boston or like uh, like ultimate tournament trips been, where you wouldn't have had to charge. You probably would have had to charge when you got there and then could have made it back. Boston, I could go there and back without charging. There and back without? Yep. yep. About 400 miles. I really wish you had the chance to do that because yeah. like I, I'd be interested to see someone who has to plan a charging trip into everything, not yeah. have to do that. And now learning that there's an 87,000, still very expensive car, yeah. and generally chances you're getting that actual car under 100 by the time you like factor everything in is probably pretty tough, but 100,000 at over 400 is kind of yeah. awesome. That, that will be, I think, the main... Uh, we keep thinking about like reasons you would get a certain EV or over another and like which ones you're cross shopping. So the person who would theoretically get the Lucid Air Pure, the $87,000 version of this car is probably cross shopping against things like a Model S or maybe 
an EQS is more expensive, but like this is half the price of the $160,000 car we tested. And I'm like, the range has gotta be the number one reason you go with this For car. Sure. Um, I've noticed also that the accuracy of the range that it predicts that you will get is pretty close, much better than Tesla, not as good as Rivian. Rivian's is incredible. Okay. Um, in Tesla, like you can line up at the zero and have a target 200 miles away and it'll say you have 250 miles of battery and you might not make it because <laughs> if That's you drive crazy. a certain way, you can use way more power than it's rated to do during that normal driving trip. That, that's something I found really interesting testing all these and, and asking you guys who have Teslas is it seems to be a lot of you guys think Tesla has one of the worst range estimators inside it's, of their it's, car. It's, yeah, I would say it's the most variable. Okay. So Which is I, not a good thing. Right, yeah. like I know that if I drive a certain way, I can and will get great range. Mm -hmm. If I drive like without accelerating hard in chill mode and I don't like go up and down too many massive hills, whatever, like a normal drive, I will get my range. But if I do one pull, which is like, I, it, it's a nice fast car, I wanna yeah. do one highway pull. You can lose 10 miles of range in 10 seconds in less than a mile of driving. Yeah. So like that type of peak power is what you pay for to get that amazing performance, but now you have 10 miles less of range. And just any little thing you do might eat into your range. So I think the the Rivian, for example, is a lot more conservative where it's just like, you'll get 300 miles of range kind of no matter how hard you drive. Okay. And if you drive conservatively, you might get more. So. I, think, I think that's awesome. Yeah. I think all the legacy manufacturers are gonna be on that conservative I think thing. So. I, think. I think that's the way. Yeah. So anyway, watch the Lucid Air review if you haven't already. There's a main channel video. It's awesome. I will say the first 10 seconds are literally incredible. Was Brandon and I'm kind of biased, yeah. but you should watch it. There's also an autofocus channel video. We'll link them in the show notes. For sure. They're both great. And I'll include that clip where you guys can hear out the guy. Like, okay. That's a nice car. Hey, thanks for watching that clip. If you would like to hit subscribe, I suggest folding your mouse pad in half and then I don't know where I was going. Mac didn't like that joke. No, not at all. No. I should start a different one. Max says subscribe. You subscribe. We love Waveform. Rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. I think that should be the entire clips outro. You're good at this, Mac. I think yeah. Mac's gonna take my spot. Yeah. New co-host, best co-host. We'll get like a super tall doggy chair and a mic, just like right. You can just here. You can just have two buttons that says he agrees or disagrees with everything he said. Yeah, it's perfect. Probably better than what I say. <laughs> 